Okay, greetings ladies and gentlemen. This is Professor G here again today. And I would like to take a moment uh, to give you a very, very brief introduction to Native American religion. Uh, this brief introduction will provide you a kind of a broader context uh, for the primary source that I'm going to have you read, the Apache creation story. Uh, so hopefully this introduction will give you a better understanding of what exactly this creation story means, or at least not, if not what it means, then uh, perhaps why these tribes thought the way they did, especially about religious matters. Uh, first things first, there's a very common misconception um, that I often encounter when I give lectures like this, uh, especially as you notice uh, the title of the primary source that I'm going to have you read is the an, an Apache creation myth. Now that word myth throws a lot of people off because typically speaking, um, if you stop uh, the everyday person in the street and you say, um, what do you think of when I say the word myth? The usual response is that a myth is, uh, is a story, but that this story is somehow factually incorrect, or perhaps that this story doesn't agree with our current day understanding of the world, or that it's scientifically inaccurate or something along those lines is the usual response that I get when I talk about mythology. Uh, however, this is not what uh, myth meant for ancient peoples, and this is not what myth means within an academic context. When we're talking about the Apache creation myth, right, we're not holding it to the same uh, scientific standards that we would other creation stories, like when we talk about the creation of the universe via the Big Bang. Okay, these are two uh, separate uh, descriptions of creations. As far as myth goes, in the ancient world, a myth was meant to convey some sort of moral truth. Or if not a moral truth, a myth was meant to convey some sort of message about uh, the nature of humanity or perhaps about our relation to the natural world. A myth uh, is a story that is supposed to bring out these elements, to bring you to a deeper level of understanding or perhaps a different level of thinking about um, these relationships that we have. So it's a bit silly for us to hold these myths, for example, to current uh, scientific findings, right? If you ever take an English class, you wouldn't read Shakespeare and say, oh, well, Shakespeare is a complete idiot because he has no understanding of general relativity, right? No shit. Shakespeare's writing in the 17th century, and he's interested in telling a story. He's interested in writing plays. He's not interested in commenting upon current scientific knowledge. Even if he was, he couldn't, because he doesn't know the same stuff that we know today. So don't think of these myths as being incorrect or some sort of primitive understanding about the nature of reality. Rather, what I want you to look for is I want you to look for the underlying meaning of these myths. What sort of moral message is this myth trying to portray? What sort of um, picture of reality is it creating? What does this myth have to say about human beings' relationship with the natural world? So when I want you to examine these myths, that's the route I want you to take, right? I know this myth doesn't correspond to what we know about reality, right? That's not what its purpose is. Its purpose is to teach you something. So figure out what exactly it's trying to teach you. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Native American religions. Now, it's hard to give a, uh, a general understanding of Native American religions simply because um, Native American religion, generally speaking, is as varied as Native American culture or these individual Native American tribes, which I talked about in my previous lecture. Right, There are hundreds of different 
Native American tribes. Likewise, there are hundreds of different Native American religions. Nevertheless, uh, what I want to do today is to give you some general trends that are observed in Native American religion. Sorry, my lights went out again. Come on, lights. Still here. So some general trends. Um, and I'm going to talk about four different general trends that we can kind of gather if we look at Native American religions as a whole. Kind of four um, similarities that they all have. The first trend I would like to talk about is Native American commitment to a philosophical position, uh, philosophical slash religious position. Sorry, I got to put the screen down here. A religious position known as animism. Animism. Simply put, animism is a, a belief that is characterized by um, is, is a view of reality that is characterized by an understanding of all natural phenomenon in a spiritual way. Uh, there are an almost innumerable number of spiritual beings concerned with human affairs and capable of helping or harming human interest. Um, this belief is probably a bit strange to us in the West uh, because this belief is typically um, not associated with our Western monotheistic religions. And I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. But animism is this belief that um, spirits, uh, that souls inhabit even inanimate objects. So everything, living and even things non-living perhaps, have uh, some sort of soul or some sort of spirit. So it uh, originate in ideas that spiritual and our material world is innately entwined. Okay, so the big thing about animism is that there's no distinction between the spiritual world on the one hand and the physical world on the other. So animism uh, is basically the belief that all of perceived reality also has a spiritual element to it. Sometimes this belief is referred to as pantheistic. Pantheistic. And I want to talk for a second about what exactly do we mean when we say pantheistic as opposed to, for example, theistic. Okay, what's the difference between a pantheistic belief and a theistic belief? So you have two, well, you have, I'm going to simplify it a bit here for the sake of explanation. So you have, um, we're just going to compare and contrast theistic versus pantheistic. So most of you are probably familiar with theism. Theism is the belief, as far as God and the world are concerned, you have God here, and you have the world or the entire universe here. So with regards to theism, God sits outside of the universe. Uh, the Greek philosopher Boethius compared God's uh, relationship with the world as to somebody sitting on a cliff and watching a ship go by, right? The person can see the ship, can see the direction of the ship, see the entirety of the ship, and knows where the ship's going. But nevertheless, he is viewing the ship from afar. So as far as traditional theism is concerned, uh, God is distinct and separate from our universe, from the material universe. So in this sense then, the spiritual world and the physical world are distinct from one another. God 
creates the universe in our uh, Western monotheistic tradition. He creates the universe, and therefore God is not dependent upon the universe for his or her existence. Right? God has power over the physical world. He's not dependent upon or limited to the physical world. Okay, so according to theism, you take away the physical universe, God's still there. Pantheism is a bit different. It's a bit, it's a different take on the relationship between God and the universe. Pantheism. So according to pantheism, you have the universe in its entirety, the entire universe, and in this material universe, you also have the spiritual, and therefore, you also have God. So according to pantheism, the phrase that is often used is that God is imminent. God is imminent. So as opposed to viewing the universe from afar, like Boethius' God, rather the pantheistic God and the universe are deeply intertwined with one another. God is within the universe. That's what we mean when we say that God is imminent. God is a part of the universe. And God is the universe such that if you take away the material universe, then you no longer have God. So that's what I mean when I say that native religion is pantheistic. What I mean by that is that the spiritual world and the material world are one and the same. And that's perhaps one of the most important concepts and one of the hardest to understand concepts when it comes to talking about native religion. Okay, so next up, um, you have numerous religious systems. Um, with this, I want to convey the fact uh, that I talked about when I introduced you to Native American religion, and that uh, Native American religions are as diverse as the Native American tribes go. Okay, so for each individual Native American tribe, oftentimes you have a highly complex, a highly developed religion. Now, they're similar in that most, if not all, are, uh, share the same uh, viewpoint as far as the interrelation between the spiritual world and the physical world. Nevertheless, they differ in their cult. Now, I'm not talking about cult like... Um, you know, uh, the cult that has a central leader that abducts little kids and stuff like that. Cult means uh, religious practices, the, the physical religious practices that you, were, uh, that you would observe if you went to a place of worship. So these, these Native American religions have different cults. They have different ways of worshiping. They have different uh, prayer rituals, different initiation rituals all of which are independently developed, all of which are their own kind of complete systems of thought. So, for example, you can think of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, right? Each, three, each of these three religions has a central belief in, a, uh, in, they're all monotheistic. They have a central belief in one creator, God. Likewise, these Native American religions have uh, central beliefs that they share, but they're still different, right? You wouldn't confuse uh, Christianity with Islam, for example. Even though they have similar beliefs, they're still distinct. Likewise, these different Native American religions, they have shared beliefs, but they are nevertheless distinct from one another. Um, their communities have different ways of worship, which vary from one tribe to the next. So if you look up uh, the religious practices of the Lakota versus uh, the religious practices of the Creek Indians, for example, um, they're going to be distinct. Different ceremonies, different dances, different prayers. This is just to show you that before the arrival of Europeans, 
uh, Native American religion was alive and well. It's kind of the cornerstone of Native American society because of this animistic belief that the physical and the material are intertwined. Okay, so let's move on to the third common element of Native American religion, and that is the belief in a creator or a master spirit. This is common in many Native American religions, not all, but in a lot of Native American religions that we encounter. Typically speaking, uh, this creator is introduced in the form of a creation myth, like the one that you will be reading. Uh, the creator is a being who has um, created the material world, whether it's out of nothing or whether it's out of some pre-existing material, but who is also intimately involved in this world. Remember, there's no separation between the creator and the universe. He still maintains a spiritual present presence. So... In addition to this creator, um, depending on the different religions, we also have a host of other gods. Um, you have lesser gods, uh, the god of typically associated with some sort of natural phenomenon, the god of the sky, the god of the sun, uh, the god of the storm, right? Um, and aside from gods, you also have other spiritual entities because remember, everything has a spiritual element to it, not just the gods. You have the human soul, right? That's another example. Uh, the human soul plays a prominent part in a lot of Native American religions. Um, and depending on the religion, you'll also have various conceptions of the afterlife, what happens to the soul after death and the various cultic associations with that, the ritualistic burial of the dead that will vary from one tribe to the next. All right, and finally, we get to our fourth point, another key element of Native American religion. And this has to do more with Native American ethics. Ethics is the question, ethics is the rules by which we govern our lives, how which, uh, the rules by which we govern our actions, how we choose to act. And for Native Americans, kinship and reciprocity feature prominently in their ethics. And this is across the board, right? Almost every Native American society or culture that we encounter uh, places a very high value on kinship. Native peoples understand that they are intimately and personally connected, both as a family unit, right, as the uh, father, mother, children, but also as a larger community, that the larger community is just as connected as the individual nuclear families. This even extends to the natural world. A major part of Native American religion is the view that humanity is intertwined with nature, that human beings aren't that unique or aren't that special. This is different from Western monotheistic traditions. For example, in the book of Genesis, Adam and Eve are given dominion over the natural world. Adam and Eve are basically put in charge of the natural world, so Adam and Eve are viewed as kind of the head of the pecking order, so to speak. You don't have this happen in native religions. Human beings share, uh, they have an equal place in creation, along with all the other creatures. Enrique Solomon uh, describes this aspect of Native American culture in this way. Indigenous people view both themselves and nature as a part of an extended ecological family that shares ancestry and origin. It is an awareness that life in any environment is viable only when humans view that life surrounding them as kin. Human beings have a special 
relationship with nature. Human beings aren't over nature. They're not in charge of nature. Rather, they have to work with and are intimately a part of their natural surroundings. So these are the four points that I want to mention, and I hope this helps as you read the creation myths for yourself. Um, and if you have any questions again, please feel free to email me.